This is Let's Talk About Magnum P.I., the podcast from fans for fans of Magnum P.I. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About Magnum P.I. I'm here with our beloved Liz and with Rhea, a.k.a. Symbols by Rhea. Hi. 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 Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thanks for being here. We're talking about episode six of season one, Death is Only Temporary. What did you guys think? Mm. There's so many good moments in it. There is. So many sweet moments. There is. <laughs> I, love it. I have I have a big, 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 big thing that came to me this episode, due to this episode, about a certain MIC. Juliet Higgins, the only woman to ever infiltrate the Russian police. She was totally in Red Days, the one about the Russian spies and the launch codes for some missiles. So Higgy was in Red Days, I think. What do you guys think? I can see it. I've always had the theory. I've always had the theory that she's been part of the books somehow, and that's how Robin knows it do. I have to also apologize in advance for all the background noise on my end today. My niece is visiting, and I also have my dog, which you can clearly hear. So I'm going to try and keep it as quiet as possible. But, <laughs> you know, even with the door closed and everything, it's not super soundproof. So fair warning, I'm sorry. <laughs> Life happens in the background. There might be the odd cad with Rhea and has yeah. noises sometimes. <laughs> so we're fully decked out with animals today. <laughs> um, another thing that kind of puts me on on the thing that she was in Red Days is Hannah, as we know, was part of the books in a, to a certain capacity thanks to the scrapped pilot script. So it makes a lot of sense that Hannah actually knows that Higgin, who Higgins is because they were in the same sphere around the book of Red Days. So, yeah. Higgins was probably in Red Days. Yay! Love it. Mm-hmm. Another thing about the books. We <laughs> now have... Um, someone's getting a visitor. No, I think that's upstairs, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, another thing. We now know that one of the books actually came out between, I think, between episode five and six. Yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, when they go to the library, she they talk about it being the newest book. And, you know, he's like, no spoilers, no spoilers. I haven't yes. had a chance to read it yet. And uh, also because Higgins is, uh, I think she's reading that one. Is she reading the new one at the she's very reading, beginning? She's no, reading she's Red Days to the Kids. Right, right, of course, yes. The I think you can't exactly read the new book to the kids at that point because, and it feels like it's really in the middle of the book, so you can't start a book in the middle because, that, spoilers. And also confusion. Yeah, yeah. Which brings me to the question, is the White Knight really appropriate for kids? I thought that too when I first watched it. I was like, oh, she's reading it to a bunch of kids. And then I think that's why Kum was like, um, you know, Higgy, tone it down a bit when she's talking about, you know, semi-automatic weapons and everything like yeah. that. Her gun mode is showing. Like, <laughs> okay, um, so after that, we have her try to, um, you know, annoy a certain guy in the guest house. And he annoys her right back. Yeah. I, I love how he just embraces the fact that she brought a whole group of children to his guest house, basically intruding, which Juliet obviously fully wanted to do. And he pays her back in the best way possible with being super awesome and super sweet to the kids. I actually believe that 
this isn't the first time this happened and he knew these kids were coming because who just randomly makes this many pancakes for himself and the woman he slept with true very true <laughs> someone's playing loudly yeah, so, yeah. i think they're uh <laughs> they're in the next room um but yeah and also because you know when he says like oh higgy another tour group right like he's fully expecting it and he knows her so well at this point even though it's only like the sixth episode he just knows that she's gonna be there to annoy him like yeah and he's knows. there to annoy her right back yeah and she expected that too i think in a way even though it didn't really show like she wasn't so surprised yeah she was, she was more annoyed because <laughs> he took it in strikes <laughs> so maybe it's the first time he actually took it this well <laughs> And he for once got the better of her. He really did. Mm -hmm. There's another point where he really showed how much he already knows her. The episode, the uh, Jesus episode, the scene <laughs> in, in the scene in the in the jungle when they're yes. like, walking, and she opens up about uh, her mother. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, well, the fact that she issues, doesn't. Yeah. In, the fact that she doesn't initially open up and he just rolls with it. Let that, it go. Yeah. Yeah. I and actually I, had that written in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> how how well. I was like, he knows her so well. <laughs> Two pages of notes on my end. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, he really knows her well. He knows her well enough to not prod. And, and he knows her well enough that not prodding actually gets her to open up. Yeah, because she trusts him, like, when he doesn't prod, you know, and she's like, thank you for not, you know, pushing the matter. And then she's like, okay, I got respected. Now I will open up to you and tell you exactly what it is. Yes. And he's early on trying to build this. He's making such an effort with her, I think. Like, he's really yeah, trying to be a good... Uh, <laughs> English. He's trying to be a good friend. Even though she's not seeing it just yet, you know, like maybe she's not considering it a friend, so to no, say, just yet. But he's no. trying. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think about their banter, Rhea? I mean, it's the classic Magnum Higgy banter. And it, it's, it's really heartwarming that they're just rolling with it every single time and none of them, like, take it seriously or feel offended by it. It's just their their thing and they yet, keep though. rolling with it not yet there's there's later episodes where they actually do get offended by it for like half a second and they actually maturely talk about it which is another thing that i really love about them even if they get offended they're rolling with it ah <sighs> lovely on the note of banter my favorite banter scene from this episode is when he gets into the ferrari and <gasps> the alarm starts going off and oh, he's like, yes. Higgins! Yes. And she's like, what do you... He's like, you know what I find annoying? And she goes, me? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I just love that scene because it just shows, like, that she just knows that that is going to totally throw him off and totally annoy him. And then you see he's, like, a bit offended by the fact that, you know, it's a security upgrade and he wasn't consulted. It's not and though. it's also in the original. It's also in the original one, that exact thing where Higgins outfits the Ferrari with an alarm system. <laughs> and they use it in the exact same way. It's not really security's uh, upgrade, though, if you think about it. Like, every show, every show, the like first or second thing they try with, uh, you know, a number-coded security system is their birthday, their spouse's birthday. So, like... Hmm. He's a very popular writer, and you use his birthday? Not exactly yeah. smart. And I kind of wanted him to be like, that's a security risk, Julia, because everybody on Hawaii knows the Robin Master's birthday. I mean, you have to. And then she's like, I did it, it for you. A, yeah. Rhea, what? Yeah, you have to look at it from a different perspective. You know that Thomas doesn't really have the attention span of a wise person 
So it's more likely that he'll remember Robin's birthday than some other random numeral code. Yeah, that's one thing, but still other people do too. <laughs> it would actually make more sense if, if she used his own birthday. If she wanted him to remember, because nobody knows he's the White Knight. Nobody knows mm-hmm. his birthday. Yeah. So put the she. <laughs> Yeah, but, they're, you know, they're closest to Ohana. Does she? Yeah, that's a good question. Does she know his birthday right by that point? I mean, I guess she must, because I feel like when Robin told her, right, because we know that Robin told her that this guy was coming to stay on the estate, right? So even if she didn't know he was the White Knight, even if she didn't know anything about him, she, you know, being MI6 and everything, could run a background check on him and find his mm-hmm. birthday. She totally did. And I bet you anything. I she did, say, she yeah. She totally did. She did. Yeah, she totally ran a background check on him before coming. Yes. Yes. This woman is does not just let a random person stay for a long time at Robin's Nest. The only random person she let stay at Robin's Nest were people that Robin kind of vouched for. And that mm-hmm. backfired. Big time. Yeah, we're talking about, um, I think, episode three of season two. Yeah, where the publisher's son. Publisher's. Publisher and fiance, publisher's son and fiance, anybody, anyone. Somebody and fiance. (laughs) Yes, and related to the publisher. So, yeah, that was. You're not the nicest. We We got. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That was, it ended in a very nice episode that began with a very nice scene, don't you think, Zoria? Yes. <laughs> so, can we talk about a certain guy's musical choices? Vice Girls, whatever he sang this episode. I, I dig his style, I dig Rick's style. Honest to God, I dig Rick's style. Man got style. He does. In anything but breakfast choices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This scene makes me laugh. Ah, uh, me too. A breakfast hot dog, a breakfast cake, and two breakfast beers. A breakfast beer. Yeah. Yeah. Two. And I love his excitement them. too. I love his excitement when he the hot dogs right. He's like, yes. <laughs> and I He's... just love it. <laughs> I love the fact that they're like letting their inner children out whenever they hang together because well, it's too serious anyway. But TC mm-hmm. still tries to be the serious one. He kind of tries <laughs> to father the the group unsuccessfully though. Yeah, they're, they're, these kids have Peter Pan syndrome and the only one with a sliver of maturity at times is TC. I mean, they're all mature, but... The, just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think uh, that maybe comes from having to grow up, like we found out in the last episode. True. With everything. Maybe he had, like, they obviously all had their life experiences. I mean, Thomas, too, you know, with his father dying and everything. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, that brings know, he me never actually, really had to go with the grandmother. That actually makes me question something that I've always questioned, and I think this is the place to bring it up. Remember the episode where he mentioned how his mice, uh, his mouse died in the driveway when he was eight? Mm -hmm. What happened when he was eight? Someone came to his house and told his mother and him that his father was dead. And somehow in my head, these scenes are connected and it's the people who who come to tell him that his dad is dead that kind of, you know, run over his mouse. That's, day for Magnum. that's what happens in my head. Eight-year-old Magnum just had a double death in his family. I mean, I if you put it. it that way, yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, can we also talk about when they meet Shammy? Yes. Yes. Like, yes, I was... 
I felt so like heartbroken for him, you know, yeah. but I just, I love also the growth that he shows throughout the episode. Even in that one episode, we've just had so much character growth, you know, just from, you know, the moment that we meet him till him becoming, you know, TC's mechanic for the chopper. Yeah. And I just like I love that Rick and TC just no matter how much, you know, Shami kind of tries to make it like so he doesn't really want their help they just you know they're not going to give up on him you know and that just shows again their like loyalty and friendship and I love it yes very much so I it's so it's so heartwarming to see them interact it's it's I think it's amazing that you could tell they they were instantly ready to adopt him especially to see which comes back to him basically fathering the group. He's like, oh, your child, mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, I one moment specifically stuck to me where Shami was like, everybody wanted to write with me because I kept the boys safe. And without him saying it, without every anything implying it, it at that moment, something in what he didn't say said it all like, Everybody wanted to write with me because I kept everyone safe and you just knew, except for this last time. Yeah. Yeah. That you blame yourself for it. Like it was so unspoken, but so very clearly there. That's like kudos. Great acting. I was about to say great acting for Christopher Thornton, I think his last name is. Yeah. 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 It's great acting. Yeah, I think he was even in another show with this act before. Was he? Santa Clarita Diet, where ironically, Zach's character oh. leaves Santa Clarita to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> this was the like funniest thing. Was his name thing. also Rick? No, sadly not. But like, he. In the beginning, he had, like, really long hair, and later they were short, and he started wearing Hawaii shirts, and then he was like, I'm going to Hawaii. I'm like, hi, Rick. Thank <laughs> goodness you did that. Identity change. King. Yes. Yeah. And apparently an upgrade in IQ. Yeah. <laughs> that character, that that character's IQ wasn't really there. So. Yeah. <sighs> what did you think about him toppling backwards into the sea? Broke my heart. Mm -hmm. That moment. So much. So much. It was also it was also like a brave move from the writers and the production to address PTSD and how to come back from the war because we've seen glimpses of it in Hawaii 5 but Hawaii 5 never toned it the way like Magnum PI does and they don't do it just in this episode they do it constantly throughout the whole three seasons yes yes and they're so mm -hmm. very respectful of it it's mm -hmm. the disaddressing of PTSD is also shown wonderfully in how Rick and TC deal this is tough love for Shami, where they're like, hey, if you're not ready to, to live, we're not ready to lose somebody. So tell us now. Yeah. And they, they, they give Shami this tough love, but also their experience. So Shami knows we've been through this. The only thing that we haven't been through is the loss of our, of the use of our legs. But everything else, we share this experience with you and we understand and we're ready to understand everything from your point of view but they're also not ready to let Shami hide behind his disability they're like yeah so you can't use your legs you've got functioning arms so you can you know come out with this you can still be yeah mm -hmm. let's go surfing you know he even says it yes. there's a whole group of disabled vets that go out and surf and he's like so this is not an excuse for you not to join us like come yeah and even later when they're um and Shami jokes about can't help with the move um and, and Rick goes like <laughs> your chair could help so you can help with the move no excuse there yeah. so 
they're like really not letting letting the disability hinder him. And they're not letting the disability hinder their newfound brotherhood for him. And they're these guys are so ready to support this guy in such an amazing way. And he they're becomes like, you know, Ohana. Our Ohana is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Ohana. <laughs> I love the fact <laughs> that she just said the same thing in different words at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Great awesome. minds think alike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, it comes back to you're now Hanai into the Ohana. I'm not even sure if you say it as a verb, but Hanai is like the Hawaiian word for adoption, a version of the Hawaiian adoption. So I'm like saying it as a verb now. You got Hanai into the Ohana. <laughs> you don't get to run anymore. Oh, Except welcome. when you're like, I don't want to be in your Ohana, then they probably let you go, but still not fall. <laughs> I mean, who would want to leave the Ohana, to be honest? <laughs> like... uh, apparently, Higgy, she tries so three times. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to go there. We're not <laughs> going there yet. <laughs> yeah, we've got another few episodes until she tries for the first time and then the second time and then the third time that finally time. is successful to a certain extent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so much to unpack there oh yeah oh yeah i'm really looking forward to this as i am looking forward to you guys out there hopefully coming to this podcast and talking to us about your expectations, your head cannons, your wishes for season four. Come on, let's make this a party. Yes, come join us. <laughs> okay. Um, <sighs> can we talk about one thing that's been bothering me since the first time I watched this episode? This video of Elizabeth. The Elizabeth Cole, the girlfriend of Henry Barr ex-girlfriend of Henry Barr and the guy who hired Magnum is way too high quality for someone who lo- who got m- went missing in 1978. And also, mm-hmm. website, video on a website, really, with that quality? Mm. From 1970-something, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, everybody, especially the young people, were like, yeah! And I'm surprised Higgy didn't say anything, you know, being an expert in computers that she is, you know, the fact that she wasn't like, this is odd that there's videos and this is odd. Yeah, but she couldn't say that, could she? Because it's legitimately canon that this is the last video of that, one of the last videos of the girl. The girl's dead. Mm -hmm. Like, if she was like, this is odd that this video exists, that would be like foolproof proof that that woman's still alive which we can't have because she's dead mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but we're not supposed to know that at the time we're supposed to still wonder yeah but <laughs> even but, though magnum and higgins have their doubts from the very beginning yeah yeah but also kudos to henry Barr's attorneys who tell him yeah go and get yourself a pi because you know unlike give some potential blackmailers the money for doing jack shit, except for blackmailing you. He's giving money to someone who's doing honest work. Well, Magnum's at least the PI who does honest work. We've no other we know other PIs who not necessarily do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And Magnum once again proves it in this episode because at the end when we know about the daughter and Henry Barr asks them to find the girl they've already gone above and beyond and found it knowing that this is what he's what he's gonna ask mm-hmm. yeah that was Higgy <sighs> still it's Maybe like Higgy. still it's like Magnum would have done that himself honest to god they've of all they're, they, this team is on the same page about this isn't aren't they oh yeah yeah <sighs> They've got heart. They've got heart, which is something we love about them, right? Yes, absolutely. And we see it so much, I find, with Higgy, too, this episode, you know, with the whole her relating to Henry because of the dementia thing. We just, I think this is the first episode that we truly see, like, a vulnerable 
truly showing her heart, Higgy. Yeah. And it shows. Yeah, and we see mm-hmm. we see um we see a lot of we see that she has experiences with that way before she says it. Which is, you know, mm-hmm. all kinds of special especially to someone who you know, had grandparents who suffered from dementia. This is this is really special. Also, another thing that not every you know show addresses in such a respectful way, because other shows had you know the the kind of shows that are usually prone to over exaggerating this kind of thing. They had these storylines, but Magnum's just like, okay, this is happening, and he you know, forgot who we are for a second, but we're just, you know, one of us is addressing this for a second, and it's like a symptom, but it's not everything that defines this character. Unlike on other shows. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they they do a good job of writing those kind of things, I find. Yeah. Like, the I don't want to say, like, sensitive issues, but for lack of a better word, like, the more sensitive issues, they tend to have a decent time writing it like they're they're quite good at it i find yeah at that time it's still led by peter lankov and and i feel like the the experiences with five oh and no the show is not called mcgarrett it's called mcgyver my goodness <laughs> <laughs> and the show uh Mac- mcgyver <laughs> mcgyver they have experiences with mcgyver Goodness me! <laughs> yeah, which which leads up to them being able to tackle these things because you know they're they're especially guilty of not addressing these issues in the early seasons of Five O. No idea about MacGyver. I didn't start watching it until like season three. I've actually never watched it, so I can't comment on how they did it then. <laughs> I mean, Rhea and I started watching it for the same exact reason, so... Yes. I'll leave it to you to explain this one. Uh, I think it's actually season four, and we still have to watch season five of MacGyver, simply because of uh, Henry Ian Cusick. (laughs) And his... Yes, and his uh, character (laughs) whose name just doesn't come up right now. Please help. (laughs) Russ Taylor. Russ Taylor. Yes, thank you. Russ Taylor. Because Russ is like a badass and a comic relief at the same time. And bless and bless Ian for doing such an amazing job with the character. Yeah, I he's I'm, so great. Oh, I love this guy. This guy's awesome. Yeah. I've I've loved him on I loved him on 5-0. I loved him on the hundred. I've since watched a lot of shows and like, movies with the guy simply because that guy's so awesome. And I'm guilty of watching another, a lot of movies because of actors being awesome. <laughs> I watched Lost with him in it, and his character on Lost was like the same kind of thing, you know, like a super like badass, but also had his super funny moments, you know. And still to this day, I mean, Lost has been off the air for. I don't know how many years, and I still have his voice in my head going like, <laughs> see you in another life, brother, which is something that he used to say in the show all the time. And it's one of the lines that sticks with me, you know, out of like the six seasons of Lost. I, I, the most vivid thing that uh, sticks with me about Henry is um, Kane. Kane mm. from the 100, this, this initially asshole that turns out to be this great guy that stands up for his beliefs and sometimes misguided but then again everybody and their cow is misguided on the hundred and this show raises my blood pressure a lot (laughs) to this day i couldn't finish it i've never seen it i have to watch it yeah yeah be prepared that there's um it kind of switch, despite being sci-fi from the beginning. It kind of switches genres in a in a little bit way. Like it's like really really typical sci-fi in the later seasons, as except for like this post-apocalyptic kind of sci-fi that I'm personally really into. The other, the later seasons is what I'm not into. So like I've never watched, I've never finished the last uh, 
last season because he also has a topic that makes me get panic attacks. Oh no. Yeah, so I've never finished it. Yes, back to the show. <laughs> we were at sensitive yeah. topics and veered off thanks to <clears throat> Henry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We never address the opening of the episode. Oh, yes. We we only addressed from Juliet reading it onward, but we never addressed this James Bond style <laughs> Thomas with this cocky <laughs> attitude and him being in the suit is just chef's kiss. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I love when he's just like, you know, you guys could have at least given me a power <laughs> bar. I'm like, you're so sassy. I love it. Yes. Though in that moment, it's 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 the character White Knight and not Thomas Magnum. Yeah. So he's yeah. a little bit more sassy than Thomas would be in that moment, I think. Yeah. Um. We hope. Yeah, we hope. I also love the fact that we're panning over the Kreml and then we're clearly in Hawaii. In that building, <laughs> yeah. that thing is so like. You didn't even try. Since when do palm trees grow in Russia like that? I mean, they do. If you're if you're if you're really trying hard, they do. But really, <laughs> you couldn't even like CGI the palm trees out. I actually just watched that scene with um with my coworker like in between clients yesterday. We were watching <laughs> it because we were talking about um uh like different shows and like realism and i showed him the deleted scene from the last episode of season one where higgins uh is running through the thing and she's getting shot at and she jumps out the window <laughs> and so he's like got cut. yeah i'm so sad that got cut too and she's not and she sad i'm glad she, oh i'm sad i liked it <laughs> um i find it such a great scene and she like reloaded like her uh her gun or whatever so my coworker was like oh I really like the realism like of Magnum because you know he's like so often they just like shoot infinite rounds and like oh, nothing yes. ever happened mm -hmm. right? oh yes so then I'm like I'm like let me show you this other scene so I show him that you know and and like when his hands are like when Magnum's hands are tied together and he manages to like shoot off like the rounds and then Piggy <laughs> goes you know semi-automatic no way and then later on bollocks no way that you know he ever did any of that i'm like but it's so true like that was my thought too i was like how did he like robin is definitely embellishing there you know like yes, of course no way <laughs> anyways that was my thoughts of it honest to god there probably weren't that many of the bad guys there or it was legitimately a different type of gun or something else happened but no details it's, it's another thing that i really love about these shows like it comes they, they, they change magazines like there's there's one scene that has to be stuck in your minds like you must remember this scene Rhea, right danny going in slow motion towards a guy and then badass changing his magazine oh yes yes dude <laughs> dude Pretty sure there's there's like probably scenes where you can count the round count the rounds and the character will actually around that time ish um change magazines on the screen. Like obviously not hit the target because things are shot out of sequence, but awesome. Yeah, that attention to detail is always nice. Oh yeah. Yeah, it is. Always Another thing, kudos that. to Five-O and hopefully Magnum in the future. Um, we have a scene where Steve McGarrett is shot and, and like actually shot at in the chest while wearing Kevlar and he's not getting up instantly. Because mm -hmm. you yeah. don't get up like that and be like, oh, I was just shot in my vest and you're getting, I'm ready to go. He's like legitimately vindicated and not shot, uh, not ready to, you know, get up. And we have several episodes where <laughs> <and> Thomas are just like, or like when Higgy gets shot in the arm and she's just like, meh, like nothing ever happened. Yeah, it's, you know fine. I mean? yeah. it's fine. Everything's fine. 
I made a thing on Tumblr of like the the all the times that she's been shot, and <laughs> genuinely, like the only time that she was like semi not okay was in the uh the third season premiere when she was like shot in the gut, and even then she was still able to like move quite a bit and like you know pick up that branch and everything. So I'm like, <clears throat> if she was really, you know, it's it's border, it's bordering unrealistic, you know. Is it though? In my mind, I think it is. She stopped moving her arm. So, like, woman's clearly, she's got pain tolerance. No doubt about it. She's trained. She's We know she's got shot at several times at MI6. She kind of kind of lied to it already. The woman got pain tolerance. And, and you know, the graces weren't too deep. Well, the grace. Yeah, yeah that's one grace. The one in her arm, legitimately, though, made her pass out and almost drown so took time but it, it got there and magnum packed it really well but like there, there were effects that are bordering on realistic some of it yeah yeah but i mean like i feel like the initial reactions and stuff just mm. adrenaline yeah true you adrenaline. could you could chalk it up to adrenaline. Yeah, I don't know. To me, it to me it borderlines unrealistic. Like definitely, there is some realism to it, but then there's also there's also like, the the, the part where um, a human body has two states in in a, in a moment like that. It's called fight or flight syndrome. And some people are programmed if if something happens to you, if your life's kind of your life's in danger, you either fight or you run. And if you're in in a situation where you get shot, running in that situation would, could either translate to you legitimately running away, or when you can't run because you're too shot, you're retreating in on yourself, you're moaning in pain, you're trying to get away from this pain. But if you have a fight syndrome, a uh, fight response, shoot, you'll do anything to get out of there, which includes talking to Magnum and being like, yeah, get me to the hospital, despite not actually saying that, but like being alert enough to fight for your own life. Which is something that I feel like he definitely has this fight response. Which I personally don't. <laughs> you might, I, yeah, I, I don't. I, I'd be on the ground, moaning. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's MI6 for her, though. Like, I find that, you know, like you said, she's been shot at many times from what we can tell, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's probably part of the training, too, is just getting rid of that, like, run like response you know yeah yeah oh gosh yeah yeah well the fact that we know that this woman actually knows how to handle torture is is like this woman can be scary and i'm i'm on on page of the characters aren't scared enough of her <laughs> yeah they <laughs> underestimate her and she wants that Let's be real. She, and she wants that. that, yeah. She wants I think that. my favorite I think my favorite like scary Higgy moment is when <laughs> it's in the second episode of season one. I think it's that. When uh Rick is like, now that the whole Jules was a spy thing is out, he goes, I gotta ask, like, is that necklace seriously a spy cam? And she's like, yeah. touch it and I'll break your fingers. And he's like <laughs> genuinely scared of that. You know, yeah. and she's like, he's genuinely scared of that woman in that moment. Yeah. And I love that because it's so true. Because you know she would too. And like, she can. That's the thing. Like she's she so confident and and she's like, touch it and I'll break your fingers. And he knows exactly. And, and the audience knows exactly. Like, this isn't an empty friend. She would. She will. And do she it. can. <laughs> And don't mess with her. Don't be sure that she'd stop there. <laughs> I mean, we've seen it so many times too that she's used like, um, like basic household objects as like <laughs> lethal weapons. You know, <laughs> like in the episode with Ina when she takes like the letter opener when Magnum is coming around the corner and she like almost stabs Magnum, right? <laughs> and it's like, not everybody could turn a letter opener into like a knife, essentially. <laughs> yes, though some of them are knives, legitimate knives. My letter, of, my, yeah, but that my letter <laughs> opener is legitimately a smaller replica of a sword. And then it's like- I swear a sharp one will work. 
It, it's like legitimately laying next to my sword. <laughs> I have a sword. I love that. <sighs> yeah. This episode. I I gotta admit something about this episode though. The moment where. No, it's not called Hogwarts. The moment where <laughs> Magnum walks <laughs> to the hut with the swine and I it's it's hogs. It's it's hogs to me. I don't know why I keep thinking of hogs, probably because they are kind of boars. Hogs. Boars, hogs, same thing in my mind. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Pigs of the of the pig variation. Um Pigs of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Pigs of the Wild. The hairy pigs. Um, <laughs> this, 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 you know, the swine hunters, that thing. I didn't, I couldn't engage with that part. It was kind of out of place creepiness yes. to me. Yes. 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 I mean, it showed off one thing about Magnum. It showed how well he is at playing other people when he wants to. That guy, that guy is a master manipulator. Honest to God. Mm-hmm. But he only does it when he has to or when, you know, someone legitimately has to get something out of this. So, like, he would never manipulate his friends into, you know, something harmful. Never, ever. Maybe into get, getting him a beer, but that's another story. That's harmless. Um, it just shows his smarts, too. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, manipulation and all how smart he is, you know, like to be able to think quickly in that situation and figure out the best way to escape. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, um, going to the smarts, he came to a wrong conclusion for once. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's like shocking to me. Magnum <laughs> was actually really bloody wrong there. And he was so sure too. Yes. I I'm yeah. we're talking about the fact that he thinks that Henry Barr killed Elizabeth Cold. Cold, not mm-hmm. cold. I wish it was cold. Honest to God, I wish it was cold. It's so hot here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but didn't even question it. He just saw the letter and went, Oh, he killed her. Nothing in that letter said that he killed her. No. Nothing. It was just, just like something bad will happen. Conclusion. So that could mean tax collectors are coming after her. That's bad for someone who's deeply in debt. <laughs> there was no death threat in that. Magnum just really fucked up That's for once. Up. Yeah. yeah. Good thing he And I love a- that it was Higgy. I love that it was Higgy that figured it out just by looking at the handwriting, you know? And she was just like right away, she's like, nah, nah, something's off. And I love, I love that, you know, that it was her who was sort of like, I think you might be wrong about this. Like, yeah, yeah. So, um, what I got from that is Hickey was like hundred percent sure that Henry Barr was a right hand hander before he lost the use of his right arm. Mm-hmm. For some reason, but I think, I think it might be in the reason might be in his office because she probably saw his handwriting, and and if you start. You know, start using your left hand when it's not your dominant hand, despite anything. It could, it'll look weird, especially after, you know, you're, you spent most of your life using your right hand. But right hand. did, did he suffer a stroke before Elizabeth Cole died or after? That's a good question. I can't remember because did he write that letter before he had the stroke or after he had the stroke. It must Because based been. on what Higgy says, it would have been after because she said, you know, he lost use of his arm. Yes. So but it must have been after. after. Yes. You got the solution, Maria? Um, maybe not completely. Okay, I'll supply <laughs> but, it. Yeah. No, you go, you go, you go. No, 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 go, 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 go. I think, uh, well, the letter was written uh, in my eyes, at least, that's how I got it. It was uh, before uh, before she died, 
But and this is this is where I'm blanking. I know it was written before she died because they did but have to have a conversation. She disappeared. It was written after she disappeared. Yes. She disappeared yes. from Hawaii and then gave birth to the kid, which is like those months passed. So she's been in his mind, she's been gone for several months. In that time, he probably suffered the stroke. And then Elizabeth comes back, wants to tell him about his kid, about his daughter. But her, her letters never reach him because his brother-in-law intercepts them and writes back. So, like, mm-hmm. it, it happened after, but also she died after. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Also, I that the death thing is something else. I keep I keep going Danny Williams on you guys with my <laughs> hands, but it's just me. Um, the death thing is another thing that really... <clears throat> What's with people in, in crime shows accidentally killing people and not fucking calling an ambulance? <laughs> like, she legitimately... You pushed her, but you didn't actively push her into the reeling kind of thing. Like, you pushed her away from you, but you didn't actively try to kill her. That's like... <laughs> That's like <laughs> manslaughter at worst. It's an accident. Like, sorry, but now it's murder. Because you dug the woman a grave in the jungle. Now it's murder. Before, it was now you're in trouble. Accident. Like, I know when you do something like that, you panic, but we're oh, people. Why is your panic response not going and calling an ambulance? Yeah, and trying to save her so that you don't get a murder charge. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like it's like they're all sins and they're not very clever. <laughs> Which brings me to something, actually, we have a sim builder here. Yes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Very unsmooth, my, my try, my attempt to bring it to the sim. We have a sim builder here who actually has a little, she has a, a house up on the sim full gallery, right? Uh, two buildings, actually. Two already? Oh, yes, two. Yes. Two. Perfect. Perfect things to go if you are a Magnum fan and a sim player. You want to go to her play uh, her part in the gallery on The Sims Fool. <laughs> I'll let you explain. Okay, so um, I'm a huge gamer, gamer nerd. That's how I call myself. Yes, uh, and basically what I do is I enjoy building in Sims Four. And there was this idea between Eve and me that we could <laughs> we could create a magnum Maybe. PI yeah. slash yes. Well yes. <laughs> but but you're contributing to it, so it's only I'm fair the to address you as well. Yes. <laughs> well basically the idea is to create a magnum PI slash Hawaii five O save file with all the iconic buildings in it, which includes Robin's Nest, uh, Shrimp Truck, McGarrett's House, maybe even the Palace. We'll see how how it's going to go. And there's two buildings up on the gallery, which is Origin ID, but which by stars, if anybody wants to check it out. Um, but yeah, I rebuilt as much as I could. Um, Ethan's house, our lovely Dr. Shaw's house, which might go into a slight remodel eventually, but I'm not sure yet. And there's also one version of Kamikona shrimp truck up there as well. I'm yeah. currently working on uh, Robin's Nest, which is a pain in the butt, but we're slowly, <laughs> <laughs> but we're slowly yeah, getting and, there. Yeah. And didn't you also start building um, McGarrett's house? Yes, I did. But I will have to redo it because I didn't <laughs> actually, because I didn't actually record myself building it. Yeah. So there's going to be yeah. content on YouTube. Yeah. Um, which? What's your YouTube handle again? Uh, Rhea Place. Rhea Place. Yes, there's several 
YouTube channels going by that name, but mine's only it only has three sim videos. So yeah, so she's a newbie yeah. with this ambitious plan yeah. that I have to like admit that I kind of help put that into your brain. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and let me tell you guys, her her builds are awesome. And really, if you're a Sim fan, check her out. She'll there's gonna be more Magnum content on Instagram. There's gonna be more Magnum content. I think Absolutely. you were Ethan. Did you also make Ethan? I did. I made Ethan. I also made the like the Magnum crew, like TC Rick, Thomas, and Juliet. I made Tani. Um that's all the sims I have done from scratch, basically. So, if you want to play with Magnum's people, th th go there. Yeah. Yay! So, ah, uh, we still got something from the episode, though. Something. Something is really dear to my heart. Um, TC and Rick offering Shami his dream job. As a mechanic, yes. How awesome is that? So sweet. How awesome is that? It was so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It show it shows how compassionate they are and how like how selfless they are because they yes. literally want to offer Shami the best what life can basically offer despite his disability, despite his um uh, everything basically everything that shammy thinks is negative they turn into a positive and yeah. that's really admirable yeah and i love the fact that we again kudos to the actor we see and he says it's only temporary but we can see in his face that this is something that means a lot to him and and he realizes then and there that these guys they're they're the real deal. They're what the fuck? <laughs> I'm so sorry. There was like this weird bug right now. Um, <laughs> they're the real deal. They're they're like this brothers that he thought he lost in a certain way in his back then, and and he's got you know like Thomas said, friends like this only come around once in a lifetime. Well. He was wrong. This is, this is like the third time it came around for him. Because Shami's going to be adopted by Magnum too and by Hickey. Yeah. And it, it, by everybody in the Ohana. Yeah, and, and this, this deal also goes both ways because TC gets something out of it. He gained a really loyal, highly skilled and willing to learn employee and that's whew. awesome. <laughs> I love it. Ah, yeah. And and the final scene. The final final scene. I love that scene. Everything about yeah. that scene is just so perfect. Everything yeah, it's... from the clothing to the acting to the how sweet the moment is. I just oh, I can't. It's, it's so it, it always makes me tear up a little bit because it's just so sweet. It really is sweet. It's really it's, it's a precious moment to witness. Ah, yeah, that was episode six. Yeah. And we got the first, first tentative kind of news for you guys about season four. That's not yet a spoiler. <laughs> Do you want to take it yeah, away? Yeah, technically Liz? not. It's not a spoiler. Uh, it's not a spoiler. Yeah, I wouldn't count this really as a spoiler. But tentatively, uh, and it really is looking like this, um, filming <laughs> is going to probably be starting at the end of July. Um, some sources have <laughs> shown, um, mainly casting. Um, yeah. And also, I did see that uh, Magnum's stunt double is back in Hawaii. Yes. So he is. Awesome. He is. <laughs> um, so it looks like things are 
shaping up for a end of July oh, wow. beginning to yeah. film. Yeah. And we're hoping for a September release. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Because normally yes. if they start in July, it's a September release. So, it's, it's, fingers it's crossed right. about that, because I don't want to wait till December again. <laughs> that was too long. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, we'll definitely be around until September. Mm-hmm. And let's be real, beyond that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're having too much fun not to be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, that is true. And and we've got lots of plans still. Um, Lots of topics to talk about, not just a rewatch. Um. And pretty sure once the season starts, we're going to discuss the episodes right after they air. Yeah. So, guys, thank you, too, for being on the show. And we'll see you next time. Wait, no. Guys, be on the show. (laughs) (laughs) For the... For the discussion of season four we need guys we need people we need you on the show come be on the show if you've ever wanted to be on a podcast this is the podcast for you to start this is just you know a bunch of fans getting together talking about shit uh it's fun and yeah come be with us come give us your head cannons or just listen to our head cannons and tell us that oh, I, look, i've got different ideas and share your ideas just be here tell us what you want aside from a mickey kiss we all want that <laughs> but yeah you can also say you want a, a mickey kiss because we all want that um <laughs> yeah the more the merrier the more the merrier. You can find us as always on Magnum PI Podcast on Instagram and Twitter and on YouTube. I think it's also Magnum PI Podcast, but I can never remember that one. <laughs> you can see this on Spotify and I'll actually look into rolling out to other podcast services in the future, maybe after this. Um, yeah, this was fun. Thank you guys. Um, you find Rhea on the symbols by Rhea on Instagram, Rhea R H E A, and yes. the Witch by Stars on uh, the Sim Gallery. And play with Rhea. Rhea plays. Rhea plays. Yes. Plays. Never remember that one. Um, <laughs> on YouTube, if you want to see your speed build and other stuffs in the future, so. Yeah, look out for content for Magnum PI content on her channels because they're awesome. I only that much already. I've seen them. <laughs> so, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. We'll see you next time, hopefully, with exciting stuff happening. Yeah, yeah, bye, bye, guys. Bye, bye. <laughs>